What's good YouTube? I've got another full design video for you today and I'm going to be trying something a little bit different where I do a design challenge where I can only make a poster using one colour. So now I can use different shades and tints but I can't use any different hues so let's jump straight into Photoshop and see what I can do. Okay moving over to Photoshop here we've got the new canvas we need to make so I'm going to be using 3840 by 4800 pixels 300 resolution. Now this is just my standard for poster design. So now that we're in here I'm going to remove this background because I don't want it black and I'm going to show you what kind of idea I have. So I want to be creating something with gray because I think if you're using less colors, it's easier to get more detail in with gradients. So I'm going to set up some grid lines just to kind of work with for the moment. So I'm going to come up to view, guides, new guide layout. Now, I don't really want columns and rows yet. I'm just going to add a, uh, a margin, just 200 pixel margins. And then I'm going to drag in a center column and a center column on the rows. So now we're just going to select our color. So I'm going to come over to the foreground color picker and I want to go for a blue. So what the rule is going to be is I'm going to select a hue here. Then once I've selected a hue, I can use every color within this square except from solid black and solid white. So for example, if I wanted a black, I'd have to go, go kind of around this area. If I wanted a white, I'd have to go around this area, just so that it's not as easy. So I'm gonna set this solid blue here. It's really kind of increased hue and saturation blue. And I'm gonna set this as our background color. Now my idea for this is to create kind of large set of gradient shapes. That's just an interesting visual piece. So I'm gonna add in a few squares and I want these to be equal. So I'm gonna hold shift while I make these and I'm gonna line them up with these grid lines for the moment. So now what I'm gonna do is duplicate these, make sure that they are all equally spaced, and then I'm gonna select all of them, and I'm just gonna decrease them in size so that they are halfway. This is because I want an equal amount going across, so now that I know these are halfway, I can duplicate them, bring them over to the other side, and now we've got a row of six. So now from here it's easy just to highlight these all, duplicate, bring them down, bring them down, and repeat that same step. So now I can just select all of my rectangles here, just bring them up a little bit, just so that they're within the bottom of the canvas. I'm just gonna duplicate this top row one more time, add them on top, and there we go. So this top portion, I'm planning for text or assets or anything else, and this is the main shape section. So now there's a cool feature when you use gradients is that you can use this angle style so that it creates almost like a clock looking kind of gradient. So I'm just gonna select this top left rectangle, then I'm gonna come down to effects and gradient overlay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the style and select it to angle. And then I'm gonna grab this first color and I'm gonna select it as our selected color here. And now remember we can only use every color on this square. So I'm gonna set one color as that high blue and then I'm gonna bring this one into a bit more contrast. So near black, obviously not there yet. I've just a darker blue. I say there's good. If we look at this individually, I like the, the two colors we're using there because I am planning on changing the background color anyway. So now with this, the cool thing is that you can change the angle. So for example, if I was to move this around, it's kind of a clock looking piece. I'm gonna keep it at 45 degrees so that it's aimed at the corner there. Then I'm gonna copy this layer style and I'm gonna paste it onto every other square that we have. Now already visually, it's kind of giving me this 3D popping effect. And I think it kind of resembles waves, especially in this blue color. So I'm just gonna play around with the gradient angles and see if I can make it a little bit more inconsistent to match the idea of waves itself. So for example, if I take this square here, and I come back onto gradient overlay, I can change the angle. So now if I change this to minus 145, see minus 145 here is not perfectly into the corner. So let me just play around with that. Maybe minus 135, there we go. So now I've just noticed you can see this kind of dark blue line going around each of them. I've realized that the rectangles all have a stroke on. So I'm just gonna hold shift on all of these, select them all, come onto this properties panel and just remove this stroke here. There we go, now that they are clear, I'm just gonna select back on this and you can see that now I've changed the angle, it's kind of an interesting visual effect. So I'm just gonna change these across random squares and see what I can make with them. Now I'm gonna keep them at 45 degree angles but I am gonna change them a bit. So for example here, I can do minus 45 and it angles downwards to the right. Maybe grab this one, do a minus 135 and then just play around with these randomly. I think the more random they are, the better it's gonna look overall. And I think I can see, I can see waves. It gives, it feels like it's popping out towards me. So I think the more inconsistent it is, the better effect it's gonna create. Like I'll change the angle of some of these. Really liking the look of this. I think as kind of a big, as a large scale asset, it looks great and it fill, fills the page really well. So I'm just gonna change one more of these angles. I'm just gonna cut this one into a, maybe a 135 there. Yeah, nice. Okay, now I've got these created. I'm just gonna hold Command Option and I'm gonna click this drop down just to hide all of the drop downs. Now I'm just gonna group these rectangles. So now already only using one color and a few shades, we've got this really cool effect going on here. So now I'm gonna work on type. Right, well, I'm thinking of some other cool visual assets we can use to incorporate gradients. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the rectangle tool here, open up these grid lines back up, and I'm just gonna fill up this top margin using the rectangle. I'm gonna shrink this into the edges here, and now using the gradient overlay, I'm gonna repeat a similar step, 
So I'm just gonna select our color here. I've got that hue selected. I'm gonna do the same on this end. Right, now once I just change this onto linear, so it's going from one angle to the right, I'm gonna set the angle to zero as well, just so that this is going left to right. Now I can work on the colors. So once again, I could come in more towards white here. I feel like I'm taking the easy route though. Like I do like this kind of shade. Maybe we'll go for a little bit of a lighter blue and then change this other end. I just shimmy this across so I can see it. Change this other end to darker color. I think sticking with the kind of more solid, more vibrant blues is a good route to take. So I think here, maybe around there, if I remove the grid lines, just make sure I get that stroke gone. Yeah, cool. I think it just adds to the overall kind of visual we're going for here. Now, actually, I could, in add, I could add in a stroke. I could have just select the color. So if I select it as this and then add it darker, maybe go around five pixels. No, I think that's too dark. I'm just going to keep it off for the moment. And I'm just going to put in some typography. So, okay, so I'm going to call it Waves because I feel like that's my whole idea with this piece. Now, I want a kind of large scale title here. So if I open up the margins again, I'm just going to shimmy this. Now, I'm actually loving the, the look of this type already. I'm just going to play around with a few typefaces to see if there's anything else I prefer, but former DJR is taking it for the moment. Now, I think some sort of modern, clean looking sans serif is going to be ideal. That's funky, but a little bit too out there. Now, I also do not want to just go for Helvetica like I normally do, so keep it somewhat of a challenge. Stoltz all gone. No, it's a little bit too spaced. I think Form is going to take it here. And I'm going to reduce the tracking on this to be... Actually, no, I'm going to keep it how it is. Set the tracking to about 10. Now I'm just going to play around with text color here. So I'm just going to grab the slider here, make sure I've got our color selected. And now I'm just going to play around with anything on this square. So now I do think picking this dark color of the contrast is a, obviously a good route to take. Make it slightly darker just to differentiate between it. Now I don't want it to look enough like it's just me using black as a color. So I'm going to settle around here and then I'm just going to reduce this in size. Okay, so I'm just going to add in some more type. So I'm just going to add in some small capitalized sans serif text just as kind of supporting, kind of add to this uh, almost like Swiss design look. So I'm going to stick to the grid here. I'm going to come onto my line tool, drag one across. If I just remove this fill, you can see, you know, that blue could work. I think if I make it a little bit lighter, like more towards the white end, make sure I've got our blue selected, move it to around there. A light blue. Yeah, nice. That works very nicely. I'm just going to reduce the space in between these two just to give the title a bit more room to breathe. Now, let me just add in a text box. I want to put some body text in. I think placement wise that's good, but I'd like a bit more of a lighter typeface. So these are all bold naturally. So it's going to come onto sans serif. And now if I just type in sans, so I may go for a serif typeface here. So if I come on serif, I've got Garamond, but I think that's a little bit too narrow. I go for like Times New Roman. So time's regular here. No, I'm not really liking the look of it unless I reduce it a lot. Even then, I think it still doesn't fit the theme. I need to go for a sans serif. Clash. Yeah, I can go for clash here. Clash, semi-bold. Maybe a little bit lighter. Go for regular. And a little bit heavier. Go for medium. There we go. Medium's just right. Okay, so now I've got this text box in. I'm just going to play around with just replacement of it. I might make the text even slightly smaller to a 10 point. Set the lead in as a 10 point. And nice, yeah. I'm liking the composition of this. So I'm just going to play around with the placement of this. Line it up at the top of the W. And now I'm just going to get some text to put in here. All right, now with our body text in place, I think overall this is looking really good. I think if I just add in some small assets just to fit with the modern theme, so I'm going to add in a few like plus signs. So I'm just going to add in some lines here. I want to kind of create these plus icons to go in the corners to kind of accentuate this grid. So I'm going to set the stroke at two, maybe even three. No, I'm going to set it at four here, duplicate this, turn this around. Now I'm just going to highlight both of these, make sure that these are both centered and then drag them to the top of the piece up here. Okay, let me just select both of these lines, use Command E to combine them. Now this is when I can just place them into the, the margins and in the corners. Now I think these would look quite nice just overlaid of that gradient at the top. And now I'm noticing that kind of dark color on the gradient, I'm just gonna bring them down a bit. Yeah, lovely. I'm just gonna bring them down slightly more. There we go, keeping it very simple and I'm liking it. So this is a really clean layout. So now I think I can just move on to this kind of texturing and any overlays that we wanna create. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a noise layer. So I'm going to come down to adjustments down here and add a solid color. I'm going to set the hex code at 80, 80, 80. So with this layer, we're going to create a noise overlay using camera raw filter. So I'm going to convert this to smart objects. And then on the effects panel on the right hand side here, you can see grain at the bottom. So I'm just going to increase this a lot. I'm going to max this out at 100. I'm going to put the size around 20, roughness around 40. So I'm going to just hit OK here. You can see that the noise is now apply applied to this layer. Now, we use the code 808080 because it's a solid gray. It's a 50% gray. So now it's going to apply solidly over every color. So you can see now once I set this layer mode to overlay, this noise is shining through. Now, in terms of adding it across a gradient, this is kind of where it excels. It works really well on gradients. So I'm just going to isolate it over our large scale image here. 
So using our large group of rectangles, we're going to open up this group. Now, in order to create an easy selection, I'm just going to use a marquee tool and I'm going to come onto our noise layer and just mask that there. Now you can see it's just making sure it's not poking over. No, that's perfect there. So now we've got our noise isolated just over the color elements here. Now I'm actually also going to add this in for the line at the top. So I'm going to hold command, select this line at the top and then command backspace with white as our background to reveal it over this as well. So now I'm just going to play around with our background color just to see if I want to change it to anything. I'm quite happy with how it is at the moment, but I just wanted to see if there was any other options. So I'm going to select this blue. I think anything lighter and it kind of, kind of moves out of the realm of the two colors mainly involved. I don't want to just go more towards a white because I feel like I'm basically just cheating. So do you know what? I think I'm going to keep it where it is. So now I just want to add in some subtle effects. So I'm going to play around with some displacements. So for this large waves title, I'm just going to duplicate this, convert this to a smart object and then filter and liquefy. Now fitting in with this kind of liquid theme, this could be an interesting effect to add. Now I'm going to select, I'm going to select it to twelve, and I'm just going to really subtly kind of just hold down click on the different corners of this letter. Now I'm just trying this. This could completely ruin it. Could look very out of place, but even just creating that small effect, yeah, it's interesting. But I don't think it fits in with the whole thing, so I'm just going to undo it. But I'm still going to add in a displacement map here. So I'm going to come onto filter, distort, and displace. I'm going to set my scale to about ten for each. I'm going to use this film dust texture that I've got just to add this kind of like really nice distressed outlines. And there we go, just really subtly, you can see these outlines are just slightly splatted, a little bit chopped out. It's just a nice subtle effect to kind of add some depth to some pieces. So let me just move this back over to our grid line. Okay, so I'm just going to add in a texture layer here from my texture pack. Now this is a kind of like water splatted one, which I think obviously fits well with the theme. So let me just drag that down and you can see these kind of like wet patches on the paper here. Almost looks a little bit crumpled. So moving this above the noise layer, I'm going to just play around with layer modes and see if anything sticks out. So you can see we get more color added in whenever we're using these overlays. You see it changes the colors completely. So I want to kind of stick with one that maintains the colors we've selected already. That's cool. I think here I'm going to add in two. I'm going to add in lighter color. So kind of like the effect that it creates onto this like black gradient. It works really well with the gradient. So with lighter color, I'm now going to go onto levels. So I'm going to use command L just to adjust this. Now from here, you can drag in the sliders to increase and decrease contrast. So now you see as I bring this in, it kind of fills up those gradient squares really nicely. So I'm just going to play around with this. And now I'm happy with how that's looking there. I'm just going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to set it to a different layer mode. So for example, I'm going to use screen for this one. Now once again, I'm going to apply the same steps on this levels. I'm just going to move around, try and adjust this, drag in this dark end slider just to remove the light gray values. Now if I move around these midtones, you can see the detail that's coming out as I do it, except I don't want to remove all of the color. So I'm going to say around that's quite good because you can see it kind of poking through on this waves text here. Almost looks as if the page is bending a little bit, matching the texture. And then with the lighter color one, I'm just going to reduce the opacity just as I don't want it to take out too much of the, the gray in the, uh, the gradients. And now from this point, I'm just going to add in a scan texture as a final touch. So I've got this scanner texture from my texture pack here. I'm just going to drag this over and I'm going to set this to overlay. Now, once again, open up that levels tab. And here you can play around with the sliders once again. And now even just bringing in the midtones, you can see how much color difference that is creating. So just play around with this balance. Now you can see the scan texture is coming through. You can see these kind of horizontal lines. Now I want enough of it showing to know it's there, but not too much to the point where it's overpowering. So I want to increase the contrast here. There we go. And I think in terms of final touches, that is pretty much done. You can see now the horizontal lines are coming through. You can see the texture on the page. Everything's looking really clean. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. And there is our final design. Now, as always, I want to thank you so much for making it until the very end. I really hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.